Thank you. Bonjour, Nakhon. It does give me great pleasure to be here today. I was asked to speak about Native American prophecy. And my grandfather had a prophecy all of his own. He told me that I should go to college, that I should go to school, that I should get an education, that I should remember the hardship that our peoples had endured, the great loss of life that we had survived through, the removal from our homelands and our connection to the places that many, many generations of our families were buried there. We were removed first from Michigan, Illinois, and Indiana to Kansas, and from Kansas to Oklahoma. My grandfather and my mother left Oklahoma and traveled to Oregon in the 1920s. They settled in a little area outside of Jacksonville that was said to be safe for Indian people to live there. It was a little area called Buncombe. It's at the head of Stur on, uh, Sterling Creek, on the Little Applegate. Their first home was there. And they journeyed through life together, my mother and father, for 68 years in and around this valley, along with my family on my dad's side, and just my mother and my grandfather on the Indian side. Those were the only two Potawatomi, Miami, Kickapoo people that I knew growing up. But they raised me with Indian values. My father raised me with Indian values that had been learned from the Indian people, the Nez Perce people, the Shoshone Bannock people of Idaho before they came to Oregon. I'm a fourth generation Oregonian and about a 687th by current anthropological application American Indian. People always ask me, what would you like to be called? David works for me uh, pretty well. I'm a Potawatomi, Miami Kickapoo. And I'm a guest here in this country. And I have a responsibility as a guest to recognize my host. And my host in this country and in this valley is Agnes Baker Pilgrim. And so I want to recognize Grandmother Agnes Baker Pilgrim. They asked me to talk about prophecy. Most one family, that somehow we are all connected to each other from the top to the bottom and from each side to the four directions on this turtle island. And in being relatives, each of us had our creation stories. We have serious conflict with the acceptance of the land bridge theory that we came across the land bridge. In fact, some of our people have put forth the theory that perhaps we started here and went that way. Good thought, huh? It's food for thought. It's a theory, just like the land bridge is a theory. For us, we have creation stories. They're not just legends, they're not myths. Their reality has happened to our people. And they're passed down in the oral tradition the same way that I'm speaking to you today. I don't make notes. I don't make flashcards. My elders told me, talk from here, talk from your heart. And when I was thinking and preparing about what I wanted to say and talking from my heart, what my heart wants to say to you is, thank you. Thank you for making this happen. Thank you for having something that happened inside of you that said, I have to do something to make sure that this earth lives, that the water's clean, that the air is clean, that we can still find our medicines from the green and growing things, that the frogs are not all gone, that the bees hopefully won't die, and we'll still be able to drink the water. Water is one of the main things around the current prophecies that are being revealed by the Indian people for my own people. I can speak about Chief William Kamanda of the Algonquin Nation, who's the keeper of a series of wampum belts, or story belts. He's recently revealed three of these belts. One is from the 1400s, one is from the 1500s, one is from the 1700s. The one from the 1600s is missing, probably in somebody's private collection or a museum somewhere that we would really like to get back. These 
legend goes, these story goes, they talk about the coming of a series of fires, that there would be seven fires from the beginning time of time, the beginning place of fire, and that the earth would undergo many changes relative to these fires, these differences and changing of ages and of time. They tell us that we are living now in the time of the seventh fire, one in which we must come together of a like mind. The prophecy, as I'm told it, doesn't say anything about the color of the mind that comes together with another mind. For the survival of the earth is paramount. No others will live if the earth doesn't survive. And in our ancient teachings, she's alive and she's female because we take our nurture from her. She feeds us. Everything that we take into our bodies comes from her. No matter how much it's changed chemically or by process, it starts with her. So before we can have green, we have to have brown. We have to have dirt before we can grow green. So we have to take care of that flesh of the mother. We have to take care of her internal organs, her blood, her lifeblood, the water, her cushioning, the oil, the ligaments, the mountains, the things that move and stretch, the high plains that shift around, that move. She's alive. We have to get past the linear concept of that she's something static that we can conquer and have dominion over. I lived in Alaska for 10 years and believe me, she's the boss. Mother Earth will take you out in a heartbeat. You fall in that glacier fed rivers full of glacial silt, you're going down. And the Indian people there say when that happens, she ate you. The river ate you. She's alive. When my if you can't drink the water out of the rivers, how many of you know how to make it clean and pure enough that you can drink it? That's good. When I ask my university students, 90% of them in a 50 student class have no idea of how to boil water so that you can drink it. The very basic stage. That scares me. Old burning by the women. Primarily the older women because they were the ones who were seen to be in tune with the cycle. And they took their energy from the Mother Earth right up through the bottom of their feet. They're the ones that had to address Corn Mother before they could put the corn and the beans and the squash, the sisters in the ground. The women had to make song. They had to make ceremony. And the men stayed over there. And they turned their back and they closed their ears to the ceremony that the women were doing. And they provided protection facing out while the women did what they needed to do behind them. So that everything had a purpose. The women are coming to us now and saying we fear for the Mother Earth. Because of the water, because of the food that's going away, and we have to do something different. The Hopis tell us, be prepared. One day a river comes by. Do not cling too long to the shore. For those that hold too long to the shore will surely suffer. If you have belief that the river indeed has its destination, then push from the shore. Go to the center of the river. Open your eyes and look around you and see who is in the middle of the river with you. And when you come to your destination, live your life well in harmonious relationship. There's a big time of change coming. A very big time of change coming. We first have to address the water. We're mostly water. If we don't have water, we're all going to be dust together. It's all going to be the same color. Brown. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful weekend.